Here are excerpts from my biography of Mary Rogers Williams from letters she wrote home during her sabbatical year in Paris in 1898-1899, escaping from her boring teaching job at Smith College and set free in Paris, biking and hiking and painting. When things went wrong, she found the bright side with humor. Here's what she wrote about taking classes at a new academie run by a celebrity American expat, the artist James McNeil Whistler. And you have to imagine this with a Catherine Hepburn, Connecticut accent. Among the men in the co-ed classes, there are no startling freaks. They seem earnest workers. They smoke pipes and don't look as if they have a chance of ever arriving. The models posing are the conventional, dirty, picturesque old chappies. I prefer sketching my beloved Assyrians and Egyptians at the Louvre instead. But I was curious to hear what Whistler would say during the classes for all women. They say he do talk beautiful. The classmates are all trying most faithfully to follow their master. The first few classes, he did not gladden our eyes, reason not stated. When he did favor us with his presence, he was a bit late. The air of nervous expectancy was touching. A hush fell upon us that I have never experienced except at funerals. It was the little tin god on wheels, and the class was prostrate before it. Oh, it was such fun. I felt like a heretic and heathen because I was amused. Our master's attire was faultless. He kept on his black glove, pulled out that is took off his monocle, I noticed, when he really wanted to see. His white forelock was carefully arranged, pulled out and sticks up like a little feather. No work was done while he was in the room. All followed the master silently from easel to easel to catch every word. When he came to my work, he criticized my color. He wishes everything dark and rich. Then he unrolled a piece of white paper that he had been carrying around very effectively. He read out some of his own writings on it and suggested having them tacked on the wall for constant perusal. Afterwards, my classmates were in a state of almost complete collapse. It was the day after the ball. The class has flourished and increased. We have Americans, English, Russian, and Spanish adoring females at his feet. I'm going to take a break to get filled up with some fresh air. I'm only a little tempted to return to the classes with men at the academy to see some of the dear freaks again.